there's nothing that I've ever found in plural, plural marriage that would disqualify Joseph Smith from being a true prophet of God. Mormons, I got such an awkward question for you. I feel awkward even asking this. Humor me for a second. What standard are you going by on when Joseph Smith qualifies or disqualifies as a false prophet? Bare minimum, it's not the biblical standard. Like, I don't care as much, but you're in charge of the church about the God who wrote that book. Maybe you should. If they have a corrupt character and lifestyle, says Matthew 7, 15 through 20, it's where Jesus tells his disciples, which I hope that you think that you are, that they, you, will be able to identify false prophets by their fruits and by the results of their teachings and by their actions, just as a good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A true prophet will produce good fruit, such as love and joy and peace and faithfulness, gentleness, generally just like self-control, stuff like that. Isn't, there's nothing, it's like if you knew this about his polygamy, then you'd be like, oh my gosh, you're like I, I'm out, right? Yeah, there's yeah. nothing like that. Like, there's nothing that disqualifies Joseph uh, to being a true prophet of God, uh, in my estimation. Uh, there's there's nothing uncomfortable. Yes, disqualifying. No. What's the difference for you, in your perspective? What's the difference between the two of those? Uh, uncomfortable. It's about religion and sexuality, right? Yeah. So that's why it's uncomfortable. But disqualifying. Like, does Joseph do anything? Is he like taking advantage of girls? Is he doing something that would be super sleazy, like, uh, or even like a little bit sleazy? And there's no sleaze. There's no shenanigans. There's no abuse of his power. I like playing along with Mormons or apologist games and going by their own standards and then absolutely owning them. So this will be easy. So even if I granted you that there is nothing sleazy about Joseph Smith's polygamy, the way that he practiced it, which, you know, hey, that might make some people uncomfortable, but if the very fruits of polygamy that every single Mormon knows that they just get uncomfortable about, they're like, oh, the missionaries are coming over, make sure our friend knows that we don't practice polygamy anymore. People know it's uncomfortable to bring up that a 70 year old is marrying a 15 year old girl and having five kids by her. The very standard of mistakes and uncomfortable behavior that Joseph set up that every other prophet followed in the years to come and so many other thousands of Mormon men and women and children have been harmed by that Mormons today don't like talking about. Those are the rotten fruits that every single Mormon, that you, the Mormons today. Context, if you only knew the context, all because everyone is trying to desperately distance themselves from it. Is that a rotten fruit yet? Let's keep going. Is that a rotten fruit? Does the taste of polygamy and how it's been practiced after Joseph Smith, does that feel rotten in your mouth? Is that something you know you spit out and you don't like talking about? Is he doing something that would be super sleazy? So if it's not sleazy for Joseph Smith to demand the wives of all 12 of his apostles, for example, including the first wife of Heber C. Kimball. And when she refused, Heber offered his 14 year old daughter instead. But let's see, see what he has next. See what he has to say next. Marrying other men's wives, that's another one that some people are like, what the heck? He married other men's wives? It's like, yeah, but when you, okay, when you look at it, he's actually, most of those women were married to men who were not members of the church or were less active, or who did not put any faith in the afterlife. But these women are faithful. And the understanding at the time was, right, so yeah. I'm giving context now, right? You needed to be married probably in this life to somebody faithful to qualify for the celestial kingdom. So like when Jedediah M. Grant, the second counselor to Brigham Young, said in a sermon that you can find in the church's journal of discourses that when Joseph told them, you know what, all covenants done away with. No, old ones are out. New ones are these the binding ones. Joseph established all of this for us now. It's 1854. Here we are in the Utah Territory. When Joseph Smith taught, I'm going to repeat it right now. So you guys all know this is the standard of which the restoration was founded on. Joseph Smith said, can I have some money? It is your guys' job to say, I wish I had more. And if he comes to you and says, I want your wife, you should say, here she is. But that's all I got. I only have one, Joseph. Uh, I wish I had more. So with those types of instructions aligning with every other cult leader, where do you get off thinking that because Joseph did it, it can't disqualify him from being the prophet? That it's not sleazy? Like, how do we get that this is not definitionally unacceptable, unethical, manipulative, exploitive, deceitful behavior for personal gratification? Help me get to where you got to, that this is not sleazy. Mormons and apologists, they always want you to be like, context, context, look through the context, but their context is about here, and then their context is over here, and then their context is over here. Hey, why don't we just look at the actual wider context? Because there is actually no good context, biblically or morally, that you can spin, that you can put around Joseph Smith proclaiming polygamy, mouthpiece of God, that this is a central doctrine, polygamy, and necessary to 
enter heaven uh, to the point that it, supposedly this free agency thing that Mormons are really big on, that needed to be superseded. Free agency of women and children had to be superseded when you have 57 year old mouthpieces of God taking 15 year old plural wives. There is no spin out of the manipulative, sexploitative behavior his successors have done. So when Brigham Young is preaching that he doesn't want to see any boys above 16 or any girls above 14 unmarried and threatens that if the young men did not marry the girls that the old men would. And because of this type of commandment, mouthpiece of God, Brigham Young, in 1856, a bishop in the church felt justified by God to then marry four of his nieces, including a 12 year old girl who was forced into a marriage that she detested. Trying to benefit those women, according to the theology that you need to be married celestially to qualify for celestial kingdom. In fact, he would, he would often propose to these women through their brother or their dad, like the protector of their virtue, the protector of their chastity. Like mm. he would, he would ask them, right, to to propose to their to their sister or their daughter, whatever the case may be, uh, on his behalf. Uh, that doesn't sound like the actions of someone who's just trying to take advantage of girls, right? So, like to sum up, it's from worse to bad to horrible. So, by the very fact that this Mormon apologist has to be so sleazy to think that when times came up, like the situations where Joseph Smith asked all of the twelve apostles. For their wives and he basically put them through like this abrahamic test to make sure that they would do it this guy is acting like as if that imbues more character onto joseph smith or onto the man of the church winning in this situation <laughs> so heber c kimball fasted for three days wept and prayed with a broken bleeding heart he describes himself as having a soul mastered for the sacrifice and led his darling wife to the prophet's house and presented her to joseph wherein joseph said well this is proof of your devotion and i i am just going to seal the two of you together for eternity well done but i do need to take your 14 year old daughter no one leaves without me having well girls are hot what can i say i gotta have one of one or the other one or the other Mormons, are you really going to be like, this is uncomfortable, but this is not a disqualifier for you being a prophet? It's not sleazy. I honestly don't know by what standard you're going by here. If you at least want to go by the biblical one of by your fruits, you shall know them. Besides just the idea that plural marriage needed to be something that you had to enter into because it's super duper important. And then it's actually like totally later abandoned that we don't actually have to do that in this life. Give me one good fruit from Joseph or his successors polygamy wise that align with Jesus' teachings that a true prophet will bear good fruit. I've looked and I'm just not seeing any. One quick caveat that it can't be something that it just moves Mormon men who comply with handing over their wives or their daughters um, to the prophet or somebody in leadership. It can't just like further that person up the leadership ladder. Like part of the problem, if you're not, not like this guy who's like, isn't that great? Prophet Joseph Smith and Apostle Heber C. Kimball, they had negotiations about Heber's wife and his daughter's eternal salvation and who they were gonna be married to um, behind their back to make sure that they could secure their own eternal salvation too. Isn't that neat? Isn't that fun? That's part of the problem. <laughs> so give me a good fruit of Joseph's polygamy. And if one of you says, oh, I'm so grateful that I live in America now because my great, great grandmother was sex trafficked from England. I've heard black people say that they are grateful to live in America, but that doesn't make slavery justified. And it absolutely doesn't make the people who captured and sold human beings profits. And we know that capturing people with guns to their heads is wrong, but we live in a system then and now where there is such a demand for cheap labor and through exploitation and through threats, that demand will be met with a supply. And so I ask again, what are the fruits to qualify Joseph Smith as a prophet when all he did was make a demand, make a threat over the souls of women? And the supply is ill-gotten, abusive, exploitive, rotten fruit, dropping from a rotten tree. Joseph Smith didn't do anything that would disqualify him to be a false prophet. Well, uh, if in heaven God wants to judge me that this is the data that I got, this is the fact that I understood. If there is a heaven that Joseph and Brigham run, send me to hell, send me to that one. There's no difference.